So the first question uh, would be, when can we expect the tokenomics update? Okay, tokenomics update is uh, covered by me. So our tokenomics officer is currently working on this and we will release a full tokenomics report uh, very soon. I, what I want to say is that nothing fundamental has changed about the circulating supply of our token, obviously, because our team tokens are locked. We've actually only vested our team tokens quarterly after six months, uh, after six months uh, since our listing last year, as a gesture of goodwill to the community. Our partner tokens are all intact as well. So in any case, I think the uh, fundamental answer to this question is nothing has changed about circulating supply. But we will issue a full report soon uh, by our tokenomics uh, officer. Okay, next question. Okay, thank you. Next question. Hi, would there be an incentive for those who hold the bold token? Yeah, sure. So we have already aggressively built out our first two major use cases, which is stake and lightning round. But the main breakthrough was the bridge actually connecting Bolt Plus and Pegasus together. So if there was a year for utility and adoption for, uh, to happen, I would say that in 2020, stake would be a user-driven use case and lightning round will be a sponsor-driven use case. So we look to innovate more uh, and add more utility as well as to make full use of Boat Plus and Pegasus. So naturally, the Boat token will be the glue in this ecosystem. We have also heard the community's request to see if we can implement staking rewards in the ecosystem. So everything will happen in good time. Okay, thank you. Next question will be how Bolt Token will sustain itself and is there any new uh, news regards the telco partnerships? Okay, um, there's plenty of news, all right. Um, having said that, I think we've learned from the last couple of news pieces that we've released uh, we had the best of intentions when we provided our community with uh, very quick updates, whether by news updates, whether by Twitter or sometimes by Telegram, right? But it's been taken completely the wrong way. Uh, the idea was completely missed out. Our intention when we introduced these bits and pieces of news is not that it's meant to represent the entire news piece. It's more of a quick peek for our community because they are our community. They, sh they should have some advantages, right? But it's completely been used against us. So from now on, you know, we are going to hold back the news release until we uh, will shortly be able to follow up with a full narrative yeah. on that piece of news. So that you know, nobody has a second guess as to what it means or what benefit it brings to the community. So I think the point to be made is 2019 uh, was a year of building, a lot of building. Uh, we're not saying everything has been completely built, but the bulk of what we needed building has been done, right? So 2020 onwards uh, is all about enhancements and additions of you know whatever comes down the track, but the fundamental pillars of the service, of the product, of the business have been built, right? So 2020, moving on, aside from enhancements to the core service, is basically a year of scaling and adding utility, right, to the token itself. And, uh, you know, these are the pieces of news as they come that we will be sharing with the community. But I think, rest assured, there's plenty coming. Right, it's Bundy coming uh, this year and the year ahead and the year after that. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot to look forward to. Sounds good, Jamal. Okay, the next question will be, why did Bull choose for Binance and Zilliqa chain? Yeah, I think we've covered this question previously, but it is important for us to recover it and also to uh, emphasize the point that you know we wanted to just combine the power Binance chain's high liquidity fast confirmations and uh, Zilliqa's uh, smart contract system. So over the next few weeks, we will be announcing how we'll be taking a step forward in utilizing Zilliqa's uh, smart contract processing language very soon. Uh, it should be uh, something that I think the community and of course our sponsors can look forward to. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Crystal. 
Uh, the next question will be regards partnerships. Is there any update regards the business equity round? Yes, um, I think there's a lot of interest in the bulk business and the company now. Uh, so we've got six separate due diligences running. Uh, you know, these had to be pre-selected from a larger group of uh, interested parties. Because I think beyond looking for funding, we are also looking for strategic um, additions to the board family. So, you know, uh, cash is one thing, but we also want to know that the party joining us uh, on that equity round uh, also brings something special to the team. Uh, that allows either the product to scale, the business to scale, um, you know, brings in a content partnership, for instance. So uh, there are currently six that we have shortlisted and, and we've been working hard at uh, uh, selecting one out of the six. So um, we'll, we'll have news, I think, within the month. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jamal. Uh, next question, can we get an update regards Brit Farm? Uh, the pharmaceutical company and how will it benefit the bolt token so okay um you know there's been as usual a lot of nonsense uh, being said out there whenever a piece of news um, is uh, teased out shall we say so there'll be more uh, that we will be uh, sharing um, about the brick farm uh, partnership later this week because we're doing a full narrative on it, which was always the intention, right? So what we sent out as a teaser last week was just to give a heads up to our community. So uh, later this week, we'll put out a full narrative about the benefits of the uh, Brit Farm partnership uh, to the boat project. But, you know, uh, since all of you have taken the time to join us today, I think it's only fair that we share a little bit more with you. Uh, ahead of the narrative that we put out. So basically, uh, Brit Farm is a pharma group. Um, it's a, one part of a larger pharma group. So Brit Farm is a rebrand of the group as it's, it was before. Because uh, what happened was this was a family-owned business. Uh, they started with a couple of pharmacies, but now they've gone into, they are going into drug manufacture. They've gone into wholesale distributorship. Uh, they've gone into consultancy. So uh, basically, it's a number of small companies uh, that will be joined together. So Brit Farm will be the international distribution arm of the group. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, Pharma Warehouse will be the um, uh, pharmaceutical front-facing arm of the company. So basically, they are going through a rebrand and a reorganization, which is why, you know, some uh, not more material can be found on the internet. And because they're based in the UK, uh, a lot of what they're doing on the rebranding side and communication side actually has to clear the Department of Health of the UK. So prior to that, they're not allowed to put out anything, which, you know, explains why there's a lack of material. So basically, um, uh, what we're doing is, uh, obviously, we needed to start with a party that is uh, on the, on the uh, 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 partner side. Uh, we had to work with someone who was willing right, to look uh, at adopting the token. Obviously, we can't go and talk to a Smith, GlaxoSmithKline, Beecham, uh, or we can't go and talk to an actor as yet. I mean, that will come hopefully one day. So we have to start with a modest group that is open to ideas, right? So hence why we work with a smaller group. So Brit Farm basically uh, has ambitions um, to consolidate and grow their distribution business in East Africa, uh, specifically starting with Ethiopia, Somalia, uh, and then Kenya, and then spreading down the coast. So they set up Brit Farm essentially to look at this part of the business. So to be clear, to be clear, uh, they are looking to accept tokens in countries where uh, the level of disposable income is not as high as the UK, where people still require medicine, 
but possibly do not have the means, like the UK, for instance, to afford those medicines. So the idea here is for the community to earn tokens through various activities in East Africa that we'll be introducing, and then in the process earn the tokens, and then use those tokens as a means for payment of pharma goods, uh, pharmaceuticals, and daily essentials. So that's the plan. So we'll start possibly either in Somalia and Ethiopia or Somalia first, and then move down the coast of East Africa. Remember, we already have a setup in Nairobi ourselves, and then further down the coast uh, in South Africa, we already have a company set up. So, you know, we are well positioned to work with Brit Farm uh, to execute this plan. So we anticipate that this will happen probably in another quarter and a half. Uh, to be frank with you, we spent the best part of the last six, seven months trying to get them to come around to accept, understanding the concept of blockchain and tokens, right? And then to then uh, economically be open uh, in their minds to accept tokens as a form of payment. I think, you know, the problem in the community is a lot of them sadly don't have an understanding of business. Right? And if they don't understand how difficult these things are to work, imagine, right? Someone so, uh, 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 pharma company is so used to accepting cash. One day you're telling them to accept something they can't see. I mean, how do you wrap your head around that? Unless you're already in the crypto business. Okay, so this is a huge breakthrough and a big deal, guys. Okay, it's a big deal. And, you know, we are using this opportunity act as a case study to show all other you know, uh, wholesalers, retailers, merchants, right, that accepting uh, digital currency could be the new reality economically. And I think just to add on to the point, um, you're free to go to the Brit Farm office and see things for yourself. Um, I don't know who it is that reported that the address is false and everything. I've been there. Jamal has been there, we can guarantee you it is not fake. So it, has, it actually does exist and it is a full-fledged facility. So feel free to go down if you want to. It's and, not a question. Yeah. And in fairness to Crystal, you know, Crystal is not based in the UK. So it's yeah. me who has spent a lot of time with Grid Farm. Yeah. But this week I felt the need, oh sorry, last week I felt the need to bring Crystal down uh, to see the facility. She already knows them. Yeah. But to see the facility for herself, right? Yeah. And we've taken, you know, photographs, not that we have to, uh, but we've taken photographs that, you know, we'll share later this yeah. week. So, I mean, they may be small, but, um, you know, I can tell you some of the things that they're doing there in terms of uh, drug packaging, yeah. drug distribution, drug administration is actually game changing. They even have a really, really good software that actually benchmarks, you know, uh, pharmaceutical suppliers you know, to the NHS. So I was taking a look at that. It was actually quite fascinating to see. So I think, I think the main point of this uh, in closing, at least on the Brit Farm point, it brings back to a point that I think Jamal and I very strongly feel. If you trust us, you have to trust us, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think we want to do a partnership with some small fiddly company, you know, just as People do due diligence on us. We do due diligence on our own partners as well. And frankly speaking, if you don't trust us and you keep questioning and try to add stress and drama to it, then please just exit the community because we have no more time for all this drama D and negativity and everything else. We've got a lot of other things to do, okay? So yeah. that's the end of it. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Next okay, time. Jamal Crystal, thanks. Sounds good. A lot of promising utilities coming up. Uh, we see a lot of good things around Bold and Hisense. Uh, what are the latest, latest developments and how will we uh, benefit from the token utility? Yeah, for sure. So our Hisense partnership uh, has seen both Plus pre-installed in at least uh, 15,000 to 20,000 Hisense uh, E30 smartphones at the present moment. And these are all scattered not just in South Africa, but also in the Maldives, across the Indian Ocean, even in Kenya as well. Because as long as because this is an E30 smartphone launch, we're also starting the progress on pre-installing the Bolt Plus application into the latest H40 Lite uh, smartphone. I don't think this has been communicated yet, but we're just sharing with you right now. Uh, so 
what we will say is that you know through our new features which is stake and lightning route users will be encouraged to earn bulk tokens which will eventually allow them to redeem rewards we're also looking at working with local providers in South Africa, which is spearheaded by our partnerships team, to sign up partners and uh, different sponsors that would be able to sponsor these rewards, and also local partners that would provide items, right, that can be redeemed for in the Pegasus wallet. Um, but the high sense relationship for us is very important on so many levels because it's not only just very strategic, we have the ears and the mind of the top leadership. So we are working on a lot of uh, I think I would say very interesting initiatives together that we can't share yet because, uh, you know, we don't want another Brick Farm 2.0 to happen to <laughs> us, frankly speaking. So if the community can't behave when we, not, when we send a teaser, we're not going to send any teasers and then they will come back to us and say, oh, you know, uh, Crystal, Jamal, you said that we would do this thing with high set. Why hasn't it been launched yet? So we're not going to say anything until everything is fully confirmed, shall we say. But... There are a lot of really interesting ha things happening, I would say, in sense right now because we're also evaluating go-to-market uh, strategy with them because we're looking to partner together to enter even more interesting new markets in Africa, in the Middle East as well. So, and more importantly, they are going to be a title sponsor for our very first lightning round, which is currently, uh, I would say, slated to be released within the next two weeks. Yeah. I think, uh, should I add on the TV bit as well? Yeah, please. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, we've, we've uh, uh, spoken quite a bit on the uh, phone integration for both Plus and for Pegasus uh, for some months now. Uh, but I think we can also announce that we've also signed a global TV deal with Hisense. Yeah. And uh, essentially, the Bolt Plus and the Pegasus Wallet will be on high sense television sets. Um, hopefully, by quarter uh, end of quarter two, uh, we start testing in quart uh, early quarter two. Uh, hopefully, we can start uh, pushing out uh, by the end of quarter two into television high sense television sets uh, in the Asia Pacific and South Africa region. And um, remember, it's a global deal. So basically, we start with these two regions, but the intention is to be globally on every high sense television set out there, right? Mm -hmm. So again, this is a very, very big deal. And it is very encouraging as well for us as team members because whilst, you know, the intention was always, you know, to start, no, actually not to start, it was only for mobile. But I think Hisense have seen, you know, the potential and realized that, hey, you know, this can work on TV as well. So we're working with um, the TV team uh, basically to rush uh, uh, the uh, test out by early quarter two this year. Mm -hmm. So their team is based in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's where we are co coordinating with the Vida team, which is their content arm for the Hisense group. Mm. Right, so this is a big, big deal, guys. You know, this is going very, very mainstream. Right, mobile was already mainstream, but television is very, very mainstream. So uh, the other thing that we want to add also, it's not just a matter of getting app up there and people watching our content integral to our relationship with Hisense is um, the token utility. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to go into further detail. Uh, I think Crystal has mentioned already that we're going to save that for later until we put out a full narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, but just bear in mind that, you know, it's not just about getting eyeballs. It's getting people to use the wallet and use the token, right? And uh, as much as Hisense has a mobile base of users already, their yeah, TV base is uh, four to five times larger. I think at last count, they had something like 30 million TV sets out there globally and then growing every year. I think um, uh, the community can also take heart that we are not just a light partner with Hisense, which uh, you know they can have one day and then not the other day. Um, we have actually been building on a project which we will not announce as yet, it will be for late this year, that make us essential uh, to have uh, by Hisense, right? 
So it means they can't dispense with us because what we put in place or what we're putting in place is something that is integral to their entire business. Not just our business, their business. Right, so uh, this is something that we're working very, very hard on, but I think it's worth the wait. It's going to be something really amazing. Mm. All right, so um, you know, this is the place to be, guys. Yeah. Okay. All right, next question, Dave. Yeah, excellent. Next question Is there any update regards the Middle East and North Africa region? And uh, can you share a little bit more about uh, the business partner side? Yeah, um, again, you know, full narrative will come out. Um, you know, because we want to spell out all the details of why we're in the MENA region. Um, so basically, the MENA region, uh, we already noticed in the last 12 months that either without even active promotions, uh, we've been getting a good base of users. And remember, this is English content that is being followed by what is largely an Arabic speaking uh, uh, region, right? So for us, that was a very, very big positive. And, um, you know, we want to build on that by actually launching a full presence uh, for the service, uh, which will be Arabic oriented. So we are actually already looking at studio set up in Saudi Arabia and possibly also uh, in somewhere in the UAE. So this will be our base of production and our base of market development uh, for the entire MENA region. So to create cat clarity, right guys, the MENA region uh, you know, uh, comprises basically of the Gulf states, which you all are very familiar, but also North Africa, right, which includes countries like Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, um, you know, uh, amongst others. So it's a very, very big region with a very, very big base of potential users for the boat service. So the idea moving forward is that we're going to be producing content also in Arabic language. Uh, we are already looking at ambassadors, we are looking at partners, so work is already well underway. Uh, there is also, remember I mentioned a few seconds ago, our partnership with Hisense. Well, that partnership with Hisense, where we're building something that is integral to their business, will kick off in the Middle East. So there are three parties involved, uh, a local Middle East party, Hisense and ourselves, right? In a joint venture that will be working on something, I think, which is um, really game changing, right? So. Uh, progress is good and our intention for next steps is basically to set up a physical presence there, uh, hire personnel. We've already identified our personnel for the, uh, uh, for the MENA region or our lead for the MENA region which is Khaled Aldai and he's based um, in, the, in Saudi Arabia but travels quite a bit across uh, MENA. And just to get the elephant out of the room, right? Uh, I think there was people saying, hey, how come this Khaled guy, uh, you know, used to be connected to Great Farm? Well, hello, right? This is how business works. You know, you have contacts and you leverage off your contacts. That's how it works for those uninitiated, right? You don't just go out in the cold and look for people at the street corner. Okay, these are people we know and they link us up with other people that we know. There's nothing sinister here, okay? So if it was sinister, we wouldn't be publishing them on our website. So, um, you know, so stop creating a drama around it. Uh, if you've got a question, just come on and ask us. Okay, we're very happy to deal with it. Uh, but as Crystal was saying earlier, cut the nonsense, right? We don't know what these people's agenda is, but I'm not interested, or we are not interested. We have too many things to do, frankly yeah. speaking, and it's boring. Okay, next question. Yeah. Okay, next one. Will it be partnerships with other coins? Uh, yes, uh, we are actively planning on how mm -hmm. we can work with other coins in the coming uh, feature net development of Pegasus. So I think one very important point to note uh, and to remember is that in 2019, we really focused on number one, building out Boat Plus, number two, building out the bridge between Boat Plus and Pegasus, and of course, building out Pegasus. But if you're honest, Pegasus is not as feature rich as we'd like it to be. So right now, internally in our team, 
we are working on a full-fledged product sprint to really see what we can do to create Pegasus to be that monetary gateway where you can convert your media experience uh, on Book Plus into value on Pegasus. So we're working on that right now. And that, I would say, also would include ways for us to work with other tokens and coins as well. I mean, this is a business after all, and we are also interested in the utility of the boat token and our related applications. So the answer is yes. Yeah, I think the key part here is interoperability, yeah. right? So that we can onboard, um, you know, other communities and, you know, it obviously creates interest in our project as well to uh, someone currently who's not in our project and who's with another coin. So I think um, it's a good question and uh, definitely that's where we're headed. Yeah. Okay. Sounds very good. Okay, okay, next one. Do you guys want to hire any more promoters online? Uh, yes, so we have great support from the community and I believe we are currently looking for community admins. So feel free to contact any of our admins if uh, you are keen to work with us. Yeah. Okay, next question. Are you going to launch cross-marketing campaigns with partners like uh, BitMEX, KuCoin, or Binance Dex? Yes, uh, I think so. Um, well, no, I think so. We are doing it already. Uh, I think it's not a question of when. Uh, sorry, not a question of if. It's just a question of how quickly we'll do it. Uh, we're already, just to, to uh, let the community know, we're already in discussions with these guys. It's... Uh, what we want to do is basically find um, a campaign. Uh, potentially, there's a few coming up. So it will be campaign specific rather than just a general, hey, we're both nice to get to know you. Please come and look at our project. No. I think it's got to be themed around a particular, you know, we are a content company. It's got to be themed around a particular interesting piece of content that we're coming up with. And we are coming up with quite a fair bit. So it'll largely be around a content team thing, yeah? So, uh, so yes, definitely going to happen, yeah. Okay, next question. How are you going to market uh, Bolt Stake and Lightning Round? <laughs> okay, we won't do a marketing 101 lesson here. Uh, but just to give you a summary, there is uh, paid, earned and owned media, right? So, you know, when we want to attract people into our website, for example, and these are new customers, we do it through a variety of strategies like search engine marketing, you know, social media content that we put out, you know, promos that we put out, that's the first thing. Second thing is we're looking to create a friend, friend invite friend and campaign in a leaderboard to gamify the whole stake and lightning round experience based on how many stakes you've done, you know, based on how many friends who are real people that you invite into lightning round, all of that would definitely help and also amplify our users even more. We're also looking to do things like push notification campaigns. We will do a lot of website optimization, email marketing, um, affiliate marketing, just what I mentioned just now, and also more importantly, leveraging off our influencer network. So I think um, later, Jamal, you can share a bit more about the work that we're doing in this area because mm. we're really focusing on sports content mm -hmm. and also working with the right uh, sports content creators and influencers to drive home you know, the awareness of not just Boat Plus, Pegasus, Stake, Lightning Round, and upcoming utility use cases that we're doing. Um, Stake and Lightning Round, I would say, would also be very integral for us to work with partners to promote. You know, uh, Hisense is one perfect example. But just to share, we are also currently in negotiations with other hardware manufacturers, but we won't share who they are or what it is because clearly the community can't handle any teasers, so we'll not share that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next question, please. Okay, good. Is it possible to make partnership announcements longer with more information? But we already uh, touched base on that, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We covered this point. So I think yeah. um, mechanically speaking, how it's going to work is uh, we will prepare a one sheeter. Uh, we'll make it as you know visual as possible. Uh, so for those who don't like reading too much, they can look at pictures. Uh, and we, once that's ready, we will tease a little ahead of it and then follow it shortly with the release of the one pager so that it's all very, very clear. I mean, to be fair, I think, you know, uh, the community also have a point. Um, you know, we are excited to share news, but, you know, so someone who's not as familiar with the project, um, you know, we need, 
we do need to spell out the details as well, just so that you know people understand how it's going to be a benefit to them. So we've taken the point, and uh, this is what we're going to do moving forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Can you briefly describe what BOLD is in three to five sentences and what technology stands behind BOLD and why it's better than the traditional ones? Yeah, so BOLD is an interactive media platform that converts uh, you know, your media experience into monetary value. You know, our audacious idea is that everybody is kind of used to free content. But what if you are actually paid to watch content that you actually love? More importantly as well, you know, we are focusing a lot on sports content now and as well as curated selection of live TV channels and live radio channels. So Bolt has two applications, Bolt Plus and Pegasus. And through these two applications, we built the bridge where you watch stuff on Bolt Plus to participate in our interactive uh, content formats like Stake and Lightning Round. The tokens are in Pegasus and within Pegasus in the future. You can redeem that for internet plans, cash, and other things that we are working on in our upcoming uh, Pegasus marketplace. So that really is what we are looking at in terms of describing our service properly. I would say that technology nowadays is not always a crucial differentiator because you know technology shouldn't be that core differentiator, but rather it would be our focus on content, like sports and live TV programming the integration between media and blockchain through Pegasus, and also the existing strong partnerships with leading companies like Hisense and ByteDance and a few others that we're working on in the pipeline. Those would be our strongest differentiators. Watch, play, and earn. That's our buzzword, right? I mean, there's many platforms you can watch, uh, you can play, but you cannot learn. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I think this is the core focus of the platform and it says exactly what we're going to do, right? Uh, there's many, many, many descriptions that you can put together for Bolt Plus, for Pegasus, but these are the three effective calls, uh, works, right? Uh, you watch, you play, and you earn, right? Mm -hmm. And that differentiates us from, you know, anybody else that is out there today. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I, I can't help but want to reinforce the point that Crystal has just made, right? Mm. Technology is technology, you know, it is soulless, you know, it does not have a place, but it is actually the content that makes the technology relevant. Yeah. Without, the, without the content, the technology means nothing, right? So we are actually a content company. Yeah. Right, the technology is an enabler for us, right? So, um, you know, uh, I think on to the next question, uh, you're going to be asking us, Dave, you know, how uh, many users does um, Bolt have? I think yeah. before we get to that question, what is important is to understand, right, our content strategy and the fact that we're producing original content right, in a sustainable and scalable manner. And for us, it is about consuming our content. It can be on our platforms, it can be on our social channels, it can be on other partner platforms. The key thing is we want them to be watching our content. And that's how we increase our reach. So look, we are not anal enough to think everyone we know is going to want to access the content only through our app. That's that's all news, okay? That's all news. How many how many of you are out there, you know, who consume content on, on other social media channels, but don't actually go down and download the app or with from which content originally comes from? I read probably 30-35% of you probably do that, right? Why? Because you're happy to consume the content through the current channels that you're already comfortable with, yeah. right? So we are getting on board with that, right? And uh, so when we say we are reaching our, uh, you know, X number of million of users, it's not to just our app, it's to our social, it's to our partner channels. So we've already uh, almost reached signing up with another Asian telco to distribute our content. And we've got an even larger one waiting in the wings because they want us to do some versioning of the content for their market. I won't say who, 
but you know, let's just say it's one of the largest countries on the planet, right? Yeah. So basically, we're happy because they're taking our content and they're distributing it to their users. Key thing here is they're watching our content, yeah. right? So, uh, so that's a key measurement for us now, eyeballs, yeah. not downloads. Okay, thanks for the update. The new uh, question is, is it possible to give us more information on the views? And we saw a lot of questions regarding this topic. Yeah. yeah, so listen, you know, I everyone thinks out there that the end all and be all uh, with the number of views. That's how we started, right? But as everyone knows, we are, uh, our model moving forward is going to be revenue driven by sponsorships and advertising, right? And sponsorship and advertising is run by country. Advertising and sponsorship budgets are not global, all right? They come country by country. Even for a brand, brand like Coca-Cola, for instance, right? Coca-Cola is uh, based in Atlanta, but the budget doesn't actually come from Atlanta. Budget comes from every country manager for Coca-Cola, uh, be it in Australia, be it in the United Kingdom, be it in uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and so on and so forth, right? So having those views across the world mean nothing for them. What is important for them is the amount of engagement that we're getting in a specific country for which they hold budget for, right? So the idea of putting out views actually is actually redundant. Right, and what we wanted to do is just take it out and work on metrics that we share with our viewers. I'm uh, sorry, with our brands or sponsors and advertisers in specific countries where they are based. So basically, we will have engagement and interaction metrics for each country for which we are seeking a budget. Mm. Okay, so the idea of looking at views is actually redundant. Having said that, we will find basically trending i mean we will go down the trending group because obviously you know people want to go with the most popular videos first right yeah. so those will fall within the trending category rather than have a specific number of views to it yeah. right uh, specific views mean one thing to me and may mean something else to crystal so yeah. what does it mean in the end so for me what is important is i want to know that i'm watching something that is trending out there right now exactly Right, so that's how we're going to benchmark trending versus you know bread and butter content, um, you know, on a day to day basis moving forward. Yeah, right, so we're creating, creating a new, more forward looking metric moving forward. I mean, if you think about it, right, views is one thing, but what really makes content popular is when it's shared widely, right, and that is the kind of new metric that we really want to go for, and yeah. that. You know, coupled with our emphasis on interactive content and gamification, that is where we're going uh, forward. So we are actually um, looking to kind of uh, introduce even within Book Plus, I would say not just a redefined uh, viewing experience, but to look at how we can start ranking content according to trends. You know, uh, looking at how you know different trending topics of the day will influence even the content that we produce because we do a lot of data science and analytics in house by our data team. Yeah. So to answer your question, the views thing is not really a problem. I mean, if people are saying that we are faking our views or this view is not right and that view doesn't make sense, you know, then let me ask them if where their extremely popular YouTube channel is and. You know, is it is it ridiculous for us to have sixty thousand views or fifty thousand views on one video when you see, you know, an ordinary video on Facebook getting millions of views? Because you know, a view is defined very differently for every platform, right? So I would say I actually don't give a shit about all of these things anymore. We are going to do things our way, and we're going to redesign the app experience our way, and we are going to look at not just innovating on trends that we see outside, but also to look at how our users are viewing and engaging with our content. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Jamal and uh, Crystal. Okay, the second question is, Bolt is of course focusing on the uh, global scale, uh, but how about the unbanked? How are you focusing on acquiring users there? Mm -hmm. I think you could take this. Yeah, one. so, okay, um, you know, unbanked, 
defines itself. They are unbanked, right? Yeah. So you need to find another option of reaching them. Okay, so hence, um, you know, why, for instance, we're uh, doing this partnership with Grid Farm, right? I mean, you tell somebody, you know, um, hey, get this app, right? For the sake of getting this app. Uh, some people will say, hey, I've got more pressing needs, right? I've got more pressing needs, you know, I need medicine, I need this, I need that. But what if, you know, they were told, hey, download this app. Uh, there's stuff that you can do on it. You can earn the tokens despite the fact that you are not banked, right? And you're going to be able to use these tokens to uh, exchange for goods and services. And in some cases, Crystal has already said, cash. Of course, people will download it, right? Yeah. So everybody has a different motivation, right? I mean, I think the question being asked is by someone who does not understand the unbanked market. Fair enough, right? Because as bank users, we behave very, very differently. So for us, you know, we need to go to what they actually need. So what people in the unbanked markets or underbanked markets need is actually things that are primary or primary importance to them. Food, goods, services, essential services, cash, right? So, you know, this is a methodology by which uh, we're looking to uh, tap the unbanked and underbanked markets. Having said that, uh, we also, one of our key stakeholders is Sterling Media, one of the best um, uh, media houses yeah. and communication firms uh, we've ever met before yes. in my entire career, right? Yeah. So, so they are key stakeholder in both now. Uh, they work very, very closely uh, to, uh, on projects for creating social and greater good. So they work with organizations, they, not they work, they advise organizations like uh, UNICEF, UNHCR, uh, the World Food Program, for instance, amongst others, right? So what they're doing is they are pulling us, because they have a vested interest as well, into a lot of these programs and work, uh, working with uh, UN-type organizations where they give us reach into these developing markets, yeah. right? Because, you know, we can't do everything ourselves. It's just not humanly possible. Yeah, so we need to leverage of organizations that have this as their main cause, right? So, uh, so that's another methodology by which we'll be reaching these uh, users in these markets. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there an uh, update on the premium content feature? Yeah, I think, look, um, as with every business, right, um, you know, I manage business for, businesses for a long, long time. Uh, I have not come across a business that started out with one vision and ended with the same vision. That's not a business, that's an institution, right? So a business must move with where the market is trending, where its consumers are trending, right? We have to accept the reality that, you know, we are going to get far more reach by making our content uh, freely available, right? And reach as many people as possible in as many countries as possible. And that there will be a different method to uh, make the business commercially viable and profitable. And I think we found it, right? So we started with subscription, but we found that there was a limit to our growth. Right, because there were also a lot of people who didn't want to pay for the content. So as a business, we ask ourselves, what do we do? Right, do we continue to bang our heads against the wall insisting on a subscription model? Or do we go with where the market is going? And we did the latter. So we made it free and we've gone down the sponsorship and advertising route, right? Because we feel that there's far more to be gained using this model moving forward. Right, so, um, you know, and uh, obviously as we've started building uh, traction or user numbers, and this is growing, uh, interest from the sponsors and advertisers has also grown. So over time, the revenue from sponsorship and advertising will far exceed what we could possibly have foreseen uh, to have been getting via a subscription revenue group. Also to add, right, um, I've, you know, both of us, uh, have worked on ensuring that, you know, uh, from a commercial standpoint, from a revenue standpoint, gold and Pegasus is not a one-trick pony, 
yes, we have advertising and sponsorship revenue, but we are already working, as I shared earlier, on content licensing. Yeah. So there will be revenue coming from content licensing. And there are parties also looking to license the uh, technology uh, that we built around Bolt and Pegasus, right? So uh, we'll be looking at licensing those as well. So, um, yeah, uh, moving forward, we actually have a much wider revenue profile than when we first started. So, yes, absolutely right that uh, we are looking at a different model moving forward. But, you know, as key decision makers in the company, uh, you've trusted us. So trust us to make decisions based on what we're seeing out there. Right, and uh, I think to also add, it's not just a question of revenue, it's also a question of open utility, right? So in a lot of these opportunities, uh, in particularly the sponsorship and advertising one, uh, we've actually looked at using open utility as well, to underpin the revenue, right? We'll share more of that um, uh, later, uh, once we put up the narrative, but it will become clear. Because we keep getting asked, right, okay, as shareholders, we benefit from financial performance of the company. What about token holders, right? So token holders uh, have a more indirect relationship previously with the financials of the company, right? But where we are going, the two will be tied, right? So financial um, uh, performance will also have alongside with it token utility. Right, so when financial performance goes the right direction, so will token utility, and that will be your benefit for our token holders. Right? Okay, so, thanks. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thank you, Mama Crystal. Okay, we have a lot of uh, support from our Turkish community. A lot of people used to Bolt Plus, they like our services and uh, like to use it. Uh, could Bolt Plus be also available for our Turkish uh, languages? <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. Um, we've already added Turkish channels, TV channels, and uh, Turkish radio. So um, it's not a question of you know if we're going to uh, if we are going to do it. We are going to do it. Uh, so the point is um, you know uh, how soon can we do it? So um, I mean the good part is being in the MENA region uh, brings us within easy reach of Turkey, yeah. and there's quite a lot of Turkish talent in the, the particularly the Gulf States area. So we can look to try and tap on those to help us create uh, Turkish-based content uh, moving forward. So from a timing standpoint, I think it will probably be for the three or the four this year. Uh, it will not be in the first half of this year, but um, we hope that uh, we've done something already by introducing the Turkish radio and TV channels uh, at this point of time. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we had a su suggestion from a Turkish community member. Uh, will there more Turkish football matches be added? Or are you also looking into uh, Champions League uh, ones? Yeah, so we're, we're doing some of the key Champions League matches uh, in our way, in our three league way. And we'll be covering it within our programs as well. Um, we'll, we'll see if we can do something with regards to the Turkish Super League. Yeah. Um, it's, it's uh, yeah. It's uh, it's something else to be done. So Turkish content earlier, I actually meant Turkish uh, sports content. So we are on the same page. So I think it will be happening probably later part of this year. Okay, great. I have a question regarding steak. Uh, we have one of the community members coming from India. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, they love cricket over there. It's huge. Uh, do you have any plans to add cricket match to staking? Yes, the answer is yes. Um, you know, the difficulty is, you know, cricket matches don't work like football matches, as you guys probably already know. The scoring system is very different. So we are looking at a metric that we can work with. Uh, the cricket team, our whole cricket team is looking at it right now, right? To look at what is a metric that will be most fair, right? Bearing in mind that, um, you know, they're also not just different scoring system to football, but within cricket, there's so many different game formats, right? You have uh, tests, you have uh, one day internationals, you have the 100, which is just coming out now, you have E20, there's so many formats. So which format do we pick? Also remember that the cricket, uh, cricket season is not like the football season that runs for nine to 10 months. 
cricket season is very, very short. So we may decide that we want to focus on a particular league. It could be the IPL, yeah. uh, where we do uh, staking relating to that particular tournament. So if you ask me, that's likely to be the direction that we go and, uh, in. So let's say when the IPL is going on, we'll run the staking. And then uh, when the uh, Pakistan Super League goes on, we'll run it for that. Uh, and then with the Bangladesh Premier League, uh, we'll run staking for that and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So possibly that's what the format could look like moving forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Uh, the Euro 2020 is coming, major event. Uh, do you got any news for that? And also we got stake. Yes. So answer is yes. We'll be doing stake for the Euros for sure. Uh, it will be for selected uh, key matches, the big matches. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're, we're definitely going to be doing it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Another question is, what are the team's plans to make Bolt a top project? <laughs> Can you go first? I think we're already a top project. <laughs> right, there's no other project out there that has what you want. Please, tell me one. Tell me two. Tell me three. Right? Uh, you know, it's a, this question can be cut so many ways. What do you mean top project? From the perspective of price? I can tell you, right, uh, a lot of these projects out there, the price may be up there, but it's all speculative. So today they are the flavor of the month. Next month, there's no guarantee that they'll be flavor of the month, right? What we are here to do is not create what we call a flash in the pan opportunity. We are here for the long term, guys. We are here to stay. When we talk about creating value, we are talking about creating solid, tangible value for the token, yeah. right? Sorry. That has a basis, not he said, she said. Right? Oh, this guy shield, that guy, you know, father, and so on and so forth. We want the token value to be based on facts, right? Utility, financial performance. This takes time. Remember last year we were building, guys, right? You can't have performance until you build, right? Otherwise, it's just vaporware. So, you know, 2019 was a year of building. 2020 is a year of utility. Right, so when we build a solid value, right, it is a solid sustainable value, right? What we don't want is all these pump and dumps, right? Because you know, guys, someone makes money, but someone else loses money, okay? So, you know, we want as far as possible for everyone to be in the green, not for someone to be in the red, and for someone, well, there will always be someone in red, right? But we want that to be a smaller number rather than the larger representation of our token yeah. holders. Yeah, correct. I mean, you know, you look at what we've done today. Honestly, tell me, with hand on your heart, any one of you out there, that the price actually is a reflection. The price of the boat token today is a reflection of what we achieve as a company. No. Right? You tell me, if you think that's the case, hand on heart. I can tell you, not one of you can say that. Mm -hmm. Right? We all know. I mean, you are here because you're interested in the project. We all know. The price is a very, very far cry from the value that we've created as a company, right? A lot of people out there, well, not a lot, but there's some people out there who don't like us, right, as a project. Why? They don't like us because we are actually spoiling the market for companies that don't actually have a product. They don't have a service. They don't have users, right? It's speculation. It's all speculation. So when we come and we set the new benchmark, people are unhappy and say, oh crap, these guys are going to spoil the market for us because they actually have a project, they have a product, they have a service, they have users, and they know what they're doing. Yeah, and sorry, to a point where you're questioning our own due diligence on evaluating whether a pharmaceutical company is real because you went to the site via Smart Alert, go to Google, Try and find Ripper. Sorry, I'm bringing up this point again. We have no idea how bloody pissed off Jamal and I are on that point because that gentleman who founded Rip Farm right, was an outstanding individual, and you guys had the goal to think that that business was not legitimate. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I feel sad, you know. I mean, there are people here, um, you know, I, I look at my, our team, you know, they are here, they leave from home, you know.
Oh, sorry, I'm belaboring, or we are belaboring this point. But this is very close to our class. They leave home at 6 plus in the morning to hit the train, to get to work. They don't leave 8, 9 o'clock. They go back and they're working at their desk. And I get people dissing us. Like what? This? Because they are having their hot meal in front of a TV and a hand on a keyboard and say, you know what, I'm going to ruin someone else's day. Well, we refuse to accept that anymore. Yeah. Right? We're not going to take it anymore. They want to talk, let them talk. But the point I made in Telegram, as much as they hate us, they're still talking about us. Yeah. That's the joke, right? So, yeah. you know, they hate us so much and they think we're so crap. Why waste time with us? And I also counter that they are actually not real investors, mm. right? Because an investor, and I've invested, will not be talking bad about their investment. Why because that doesn't make sense, what, right? You? you put money into your project and then you're talking down the project. So what does it tell us? It tells us these guys actually have nothing invested, right? The quiet ones, the quiet community members who put money, who put faith in, the, in, in us, are the ones we're working for. You know who you are, yeah. right? We work for you, right? We have a responsibility to you and we are discharging that responsibility. You can trust us. Right, uh, we may not always be able to deliver things, you know, at light speed. But hey, when we say we'll do something, we'll get it done. Right, so we're good for our work. So if you ask me, when are we going to be a top project? I'm sorry, we're already a top project. Right. So the question now is, when is the price going to catch up with the fundamentals of the project? And I think it's going to be soon, because you know we we already know how we're going to create the utility. Yeah. So it's now a question of how quick can we implement, yeah. right? So that, you know, there is constant demand for the tokens, which will also, of course, drive the price up. Yeah. I think just to add on to a point, we've built this Bob Plus and Pegasus Bridge. One thing that Jamal and I can always testify to is that we always take good feedback and we look at how we can implement this for our product planning, our sprint planning, our developmental work, even our partnerships. We've always been very open with that and I think you guys know it. So feel free to let us know some more interesting utility cases that can leverage off you know, the Book Plus and Pegasus bridge that we have built and even other things that you'd like to see in Pegasus. That is really, really important, okay? Okay, fully agree, Jamal and Crystal. Thanks for uh, taking the time for that. Okay, next question. Is there an update on the white labeling initiative? Yes, we do. And Jamal will answer. Yeah, I think I, I, think I touched on the point. Uh, sorry, when you say white labeling, I'm white paper or white labeling? Ah, okay, okay, yes. So basically, uh, I touched on this point that we're looking at licensing technology as well. So there are two things that are happening here. Uh, first, obviously, before we can um, you know, fully launch the uh, uh, tech or technology licensing model, uh, we have to uh, trademark and patent uh, technology. So that's in progress right now. Right? So because obviously, um, to those of you who understand, uh, we've got to protect our own intellectual property before we can start licensing it because otherwise people are just going to rip us off. So uh, basically we're working very closely with our lawyers to get that process done and completed as soon as we can. But we are already, of course, in discussions with a number of parties running in parallel uh, to explore the licensing of the technology platform for various users. I would say this is going to be uh, kicking off in full swing, probably at the end of quarter three this year, quarter four, right? So we are actually going into pilot for a major, um, it's not even white labeling, you know, oddly enough, they want our brand. <laughs> so uh, they, they said, no, we don't want this as a white label for our own brand. Uh, we believe in the bold and practices brand. We actually keep one, want you to keep the brand, uh, but you know we want you to license it to us for this X and Y purpose. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we're going ahead to do, which is something really amazing. Because when you talk about white labeling, it usually means we have to scrub our brand clean. Mm -hmm. But obviously, some some party out there has already seen the value of not just the technology, but of the brand, uh, which is you know uh, fantastic news. I think, yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. We need to go quicker now because we only got the room to about one. Well, no, just now. Five. Four, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we have uh, approximately three to five questions left. Okay, that's doable. That's doable. Okay, so there are a lot of business developments. Uh, we have got a question. Is there an updated white paper coming? If yes, why? Uh, yes, there is because, you know, we try to update our white paper to also reflect the changing sort of nature, yeah, environment of our business. So, yes, that is happening. We're looking to see if we can make it a bit more dynamic and actually embed it directly into our website. So that's what we're working on right now. The content is easy to write. We know the content off the back of our minds. It's more about looking at if it's going to be static or dynamic white paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Okay, nice. We see a lot of good things uh, coming up for a new website and a business partner portal. Is there any uh, more information with regards to these developments? Yes, uh, we are looking to launch this at least maybe in the beta version at the end of Q2. The partner portal will allow us to match content creators who can create ads for brand and all of this is done via a smart contract. Uh, it would also allow our partners to come in and also check on the analytics and the campaigns that they're running on both Plus and Pegasus as well, both ways. So the answer is yes. Um, the website, I think, will be uh, later in February. We'll, yeah. we'll be launching the new website yeah. and partner portal timing. End of Q2. Yeah. 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 So probably end of Q2. Yeah. Okay. For the okay. partner portal. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, some guy said here if he was an institution looking to invest, uh, how would that uh, work? Does he have to contact uh, you or? Yeah, you would uh, reach out to our, uh, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Jason at bolt.global or you can uh, write in, I think, to info at bolt.global. Uh, inquiry, inquiry. I think that one, uh, Dave, you can publish uh, Jason or my email and also inquiry at bolt.global is the other option. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, it seems that uh, Bolt is uh, one of the very few companies in crypto actually earning money, which is very good, of course. Why is that? Well, you know, first and foremost, uh, we started out as a fundamental business. So, you know, I, I, I think uh, we came from the other uh, end of the spectrum. So we didn't come up with a white paper first and then the business. We had a business and then we wrote the white paper, launched the, and then launched the token and so on and so forth. So there was already a business basis. I think add to that the fact that, you know, Crystal and I bring a substantial amount of industry experience. We actually already knew what we wanted to do. It wasn't like, you know, we were going out there to kind of explore, you know, how to run the business, how to make money and so on. We already knew it. So the idea of the blockchain and the idea of the token was just to accelerate um, you know, and to make the business a little bit more self-sustaining um, and, and hence why, you know, we are in the position that we are. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, we got a question. Is there anything you can share with us regards liquidity ex exchanges? Uh, I would say that uh, frankly speaking, you cannot have one AMA without this question and the answer is still the same. <laughs> no, we, we have, I mean, I mean, jokes aside, we have received a significant interest, you know, from a few exchanges uh, and they are well-known ones uh, who want to list our token. So we are still monitoring the market and decide even when would be a good time for us to do it because we want to provide more liquidity, not just to our token holders, but also to our customers. That is extremely important for us. So right now we have a very good relationship, obviously with Coolcoin and uh, Bitmax. Uh, you can also trade on Binance Dex officially. Um, and we are trying to be also very prudent to see what else can we do on these other exchanges to bring forth more cross-marketing, users, traders, or even a better trading experience. We don't know yet. We are evaluating all options at the moment because what we want to consciously avoid is uh, instances where the token will be dumped. Uh, I don't think this works for anyone, so we want to make sure that that is going to be the case. I think uh, I'll, I'll just add to that yeah. just a little bit. I think the, look, liquidity is not the end all and be all, guys. You know, uh, that's not sustainable you know, that's only, that's in a trading environment. You know, we don't want to just be a trading stroke. 
speculative environment. I think we made this point uh, very, very clear during this, this KMA. We want there to be organic business demand for the tokens. That's the way to go, right? So uh, that in itself will create the liquidity. Uh, no, what I would call fundamental liquidity, not just trading liquidity, right, for the tokens moving forward. So it's not just a question of exchange. It's a question of creating the demand through the business for the token, right? This is, you know, and should be the long-term plan of any token project out there, not just listing on many exchanges and hoping that people will continue trading it. I mean, you will be, you know, as I made the point late earlier, you will be flavor of the month now. And, you know, next month, what happens? There will be a few projects that will have very, very high liquidity for whatever reason, right? Uh, you know, maybe there's just a lot of people talking about it. But, you know, come on, we are a business, guys. You know, it's, the liquidity is, and we're here to run a business. It's not a trade, trading um, institution, right? So fine, you know, we'll, we'll always, as Crystal said, look at uh, new exchanges if it makes sense for us uh, to allow for the prospect of liquidity. But the way we sustain this long term is just to ensure that the business needs the token, right? And that's what we're doing right now. Awesome. Sounds good, Jamal and Crystal. Are there any other major developments which you would like to share now? No, I think, I think we've covered everything in you know, fairly great detail. Um, so, and you know, we shared some very, very high level teasers about some of the things that uh, the community can expect later this year, and there are plenty. Um, so I think it should be okay for now. Uh, but what we can do is, if there are any quick questions, we can take some. Okay, okay, for, uh, for our part, uh, for, it's a wrap. Thank you a lot, Crystal and Jamal, for this uh, exciting updates. And uh, we truly believe has a very strong, exciting year ahead, uh, business token-wise. Uh, yeah, let us know if there are any questions. We uh, receive a lot of positive uh, messages on Telegram, which is uh, very good. Yeah, and also, uh, yeah, Lexi, thanks for hosting uh, the Zoom AMA. We still have about 10 minutes. Any final questions? Yeah, let us know. Uh, you can type your questions as well. That's, uh, that's yeah, that's the other option. Okay, the chat is open. If you want to ask any questions, uh, ask both founders, Jamal and Crystal. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, share uh, another point once we're waiting. So we've um, been looking for uh, an ambassador for both our cricket and football programs. So, um, uh, so we found one for football. Uh, we'll be announcing it at the end of this week, and uh, so that's something uh, that's going to give a recognizable face for world football. So it's something uh, to look forward to towards the end of the week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you say something about the equity race? I think we've actually already covered it. Uh, so we've got six final parties that we're running through right now. We're probably going to select one. Um, aside from bringing, uh, you know, uh, funds, obviously they're bringing something strategic as well to our plans moving forward. So we have a strategic plus a financial requirement of the incoming investors. So it's progressing well. So hopefully we can close it and make an announcement uh, before the end of the month. Yeah. Uh, will the tokenomic update be shared? Yes, it will be. Uh, someone asked whether we can provide a fiat gateway for users to buy tokens. We are looking at that right now. Yeah. Um, in-app. In-app, yeah. In -app. yeah. So, uh, we've, we've actually got a meeting on that particular subject matter later this week. Yeah. 
Yeah. Any plans to integrate chess? Chess? Sorry, I'm not familiar with chess. Is that an app or is that the, the game chess? I think, I think that might be the game. <laughs> chess game. Oh, is that a... No, no, no. Thank you, EBC and BTC. Very nice to have you with us. Yeah. Yeah. When both meet up, uh, we want to do more meetups this year. Yeah. Yeah. Last year was a bit busy, guys. Uh, yeah. So this year, I think there'll be uh, there'll be more opportunity chess tournaments. Look, hey, uh, we're we're very interested always in exciting things. Yeah. Um, chess isn't currently on our radar, but if there's sufficient enough demand, you can sign a petition to get enough people to lobby for chess. Hey, maybe we'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the amount of people participating to the staking? I think these are still very early days. Uh, and we want to obviously grow it to be bigger because the bigger the price pool, the more users will come in, right? So let's see what we let's see what will happen. Staking on cricket matches, uh yes. has covered it. Yeah, yes, covered this point, so it's coming, Lokesh. Thank you. Uh Jakaria, hello to you too. Uh nice to have you here with us. Lokesh, I take it you're in India somewhere. <laughs> uh, hence your question regarding cricket. Nice to have you with us. Ah, Bangladesh. Oh, okay. Which part of Bangladesh? We went to Dhaka last year. Yeah, we went to Dhaka last year. Uh, we actually, one of our team members is based in Dhaka actually. Yeah. Are you going to use the app to educate people? Yes. Um, yeah. If you would have noticed that we are starting, I mean, we're not going to run full education curriculum, but we will be carrying things like life skills. So you can see that we are already working with X Academy, which is basically a content partner that will bring in content that teaches young people, for instance, how to use the internet uh, to make money. Okay, uh, a shout out as well. We are looking for community managers around the world uh, please get in touch with Thane, P-H-A-Y-N-E at vote.global, please. Uh, we are looking for people. Thank you very much. So, question, uh, why are we not staking every single game? Well, logistically, we just can't, guys, you know. Uh, we've just started the program. Um, you know, we are ru uh, running now to see if there's anything that needs to be fixed, bugs, kings, you know, so... Um, uh, give it time, we'll look at covering more matches and staking moving forward, but for now, it will be one match per week. Uh, just until we can try and automate some of the processes as well. Uh, thank you for Jakaria for your support from Bangladesh. Uh, we've got quite a big following in Bangladesh, so hopefully you can help us to spread the word and make that community even bigger. Yeah. When you expect users to be able to add content, yes, so that will ability will come uh, when the partner portal is ready at the end of quarter two. Yeah. Because uh, you know we are functioning in some countries where content has a great degree of sensitivity. Yes. So we need to add certain filters, and we cannot just allow the floodgates to open <laughs> like YouTube, which has yeah. no responsibility. We think that's completely wrong. Any plans for a 24-hour boat TV channel? Yes, we are actually working on that at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bangladesh okay. cricket, very good. I love cricket. Yes, we love cricket too. And we love Bangladesh as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, boat version of games. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we are introducing games. Uh, there's, a, there's a major um, uh, gamification coming in quarter four this year. Uh, for cricket and both for football as well. Yeah. So I think that's going to be really, really great fun. Yeah. I don't like the idea of playing games for the sake of creating games. I think when both does it, we always do it differently. Yeah. So what we're doing in quarter four will be very different from what other people are doing in terms of games and game education. Right. So I think it's something that is uh, worth uh, waiting for. Mm. Yeah. How many boats have embedded to... Okay, so currently we have already uh, distributed about 100,000 phones with the boat app inside. Uh, but it's not a static number as Crystal shared earlier. Uh, that was just with the E30. We are expanding it with a H40 range as well. 
and obviously adding to more E30 phones uh, moving forward as well. Yeah. But that's not a big story. I mean, that's big story for a lot of companies. But for us, it's a story. Our big story is uh, embedding in TV yeah. that we're going to do, and that's going to go into millions of television sets yeah. uh, moving forward this year. Uh, the lightning round, we are beginning internal testing first, either the end of this week or next week. So uh, we will do internal testing even with us and our own internal admin team uh, before we release it to the public. So that's the timeline for the moment. So it's the most, it's the most completed already. Yeah. Um, I think uh, what's the timeline to be able to buy the token in app? Uh, definitely this year, uh, we're going to give a date yet because we're still evaluating a couple of options. Yeah. Uh, it just has to do obviously with being able to use, you know, uh, the revenue share, the transaction fees, you know, the percentage of you know, that will be charged per transaction. So we're looking to all of that at the moment. Yeah. Yes, uh, big supporter of Bangladesh too. Thanks for your support yeah. <laughs> from the Jabaria. Yeah. Podcast, yes. yes, definitely coming soon. So podcast. Um, Largely, I think to start with, they're going to be uh, football and cricket oriented initially in, in keeping with our sports team as yeah. a platform. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, remember, we've already got video capabilities. So, um, you know, so uh, the podcast element is, is not a major item. Okay. So, uh, it's uh, basically finding personalities to host the podcast that we are working on right now. Thanks, Anonymous. Thanks, Anonymous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, likely we will probably have a, a community event in uh, Amsterdam at some point. Yeah. We'll work uh, with uh, Davos on, on this particular initiative. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone. I think I think I want to give a big shout out as well to our admin, mm. admin team and our internal team as well. It's been very, very difficult and also quite stressful, frankly speaking, on everybody. And, you know, they are the ones who really defend us and also amplify the project and also our hardcore advocates here. We want to thank you because without you, um, I think we can breathe a bit easier and focus on the business with you guys around. And of course, our internal team for also keeping the gears running. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, thank you. I think, you know, look, uh, this last year as the project was growing, we were, um, we were working with the community. We had to interact a bit more and deal with, you know, the good stuff and also some of the nonsense. But I think uh, moving forward, um, you know, we, we want to just ignore the, these negative naysayers. We think, you know, whatever news, whatever uh, information we bring, uh, they just have the wrong mindset because they're not a community member. They don't understand what this project is all about, right? So we don't expect them to be able to contribute anything meaningful to the community. Yeah. So we're going to ignore them, we're going to ban them, and we're just going to move forward with the people who really understand uh, and support the project. Okay, we'll just end off quickly with the last three questions or so. Okay. So Paul, our uh, Olympus program, uh, everything is kind of done already. We just got to kind of uh, start manufacturing the swag for the Olympus program. I think that's one. Uh, thank you, Boo Sander. I've seen some of your tweets and also your Telegram messages. Very thankful to have uh, you on board. Uh, Stephen, of course, thank you so much for always being here right from the start. I yeah. think uh, we're due for a catch up, all of us soon, very yeah. soon, hopefully in Singapore. Yeah. Um, and uh, thank you again to MF Jakaria. Thank you very much. I think you have, yeah. a, you have a friend in Bangladesh, they was. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Dave, Dave has friends. <laughs> I can tell you for sure, everybody, that I do not have an ounce of patience that Dave has. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I am extremely impatient. So when I see Dave sometimes entertaining some questions, I literally have this look on my face and go, God, Dave. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Dave is a saint. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, guys. Uh, again, you know, thanks to yeah. our admin team, thanks to all of you who spent, you know, this last hour and a half with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Time is valuable and money you can find, but time you can't is, is yeah. something I always say. So really happy that uh, you've chosen to spend this last hour and a half with us. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, yeah I hope it's created clarity and understanding a little bit more of the project mm -hmm. and our sincerity in you know telling you that we are here to get the job done. Yeah. You know, we're not bullshit at this, we are here uh, because we want to make a difference for our community, yeah. right? This is what I do and this is what I saw about.
right? Necessarily. You can make money, but you must also want to make money and make a difference. Mm -hmm. So we are the latter. You know? So uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And, um, you know, uh, there will be another AMA next month, uh, as always. Uh, we enjoy telling you more about the project, and I hope uh, you guys enjoy uh, listening to us as well. Bought merchandise, yes, James, uh, definitely working on both merchandise. Uh, you'll see some of the merchandise being teased by uh, our new talent this week. Uh, yeah. So, and then there's, uh, there's more to come uh, moving forward as well. We are in the UK right now. We are in London right now, guys. Yeah. Uh, ordinarily, uh, Singapore is led, our Singapore office is led by Crystal. I'm leading the office here in London, but we... Uh, we move back and forth. Yeah, it's not too cold today, don't worry. <laughs> and then uh, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, we have an office there as well, uh, where our systems and back-end team are operating, finance, admin, um, our, our incoming content feeds, encoding, decoding, um, and general system support for, the, uh, support for the group is based out in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. And uh, very likely soon, we'll have an office in the Middle East as well. What is our favorite uh, football teams? I like Manchester City. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I, I'm I'm an underdog fan, guys. So uh, I actually I support the city of Liverpool and all the teams that exist here. Right? There's a story there. There's a definitely yeah. a story. There. Jamal likes to complain to me about, it, <laughs> and I just listen. Yes, 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 yes. So um, so at the end of the day, we are just supporters of great football, great Sorry. cricket. Yeah. Sorry. So, uh, so every team, you know, uh, is uh, a team we like to follow as long as they play good football and get great cricket. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, we gotta go and eat. Also, I'm starving. Man, yeah. breakfast yet? Okay, guys. Thanks, thank you very much. Thanks, Dosetim and Lexi. That's a wrap. Thank you, Lexi. Thank, thank you, everyone. Dave. Thank Thanks, you. all. Have Don't a wonderful time. Day. Have a wonderful day. Bye, Clarky. Thanks, everybody. Peace. Thanks all. <laughs>